Hey guys, uh, so in the last lesson we ran some regressions and we displayed them with the um, with the broom package. Um, and like we saw, the broom package is excellent if you want to run regressions and display them in the context of a working document. But what if we want to display our regressions and show them to other researchers, like as a finished product, uh, maybe in an article that we're writing or even in a working paper? For that, um, we want to do something a little bit different. Uh, we want to use a package that's going to give us publication quality regression tables. Okay, and there are a lot of packages out there that do this, but the one I'm going to be showing you is Model Summary. And what we're going to do is we're going to run a bunch of conflict onset regressions following on the theme of this module. And then we're going to put them together in a really nice looking regression table that model summary is going to give us. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is run our regressions. So let's run some conflict onset regressions. And we'll go ahead and add a code chunk here. And from there, uh, what I'd like to do, let's call, let's label it onset regressions and uh, we'll grab our what I like to do is start with the the model that we ended with in the last session so this is our full conflict model actually one change I'd like to make here uh, some of you may have noticed um, already in the um, in the last lesson I used just GDP and I should have used GDP per capita. So let's change that to per capita um, because that's what's in the original Firon and Leighton analysis, but also it makes sense. We want to have a measure of wealth, not just the overall size of the economy. So, um, so that's one correction we're going to make to that model. And so we'll start off with that one. And what you want to imagine here is you have a situation where you um, you want to run multiple models. They're all kind of related, but they all feature different independent variables because you want to show the robustness of your results. You want to show that if you take some measures out and you know it doesn't affect uh, the significance of other measures, um, and in this case we're focusing uh, primarily on the, uh, on the variables related to ethnicity for the Fear and Leighton analysis. So, uh, you know, if we take out democracy, does that change things? If we take out terrain, does that change things, et cetera? And usually refer to those as stepwise regressions. Um, so this is going to be a table that's going to display uh, a stepwise, you know, regression analysis where we're taking things out and putting them back in and so on and so forth. So this is going to be our full model. So let's go ahead and rename this full model. And um, we'll take this and we'll copy it a few times, all right? And what we're going to imagine is we want to start off just showing the, the ethnicity variables plus we're going to always include GDP per capita and population as controls, okay? Because we know from previous analysis that those variables always tend to be significant and they're important, so we're going to always leave them in the model. Um, and so, um, and so we'll go ahead and delete the other variables out. And so our first model is going to be ethnic fractionalization, religious fractionalization, and then the two controls, uh, population and GDP per capita. And so for our next model, let's say we wanted to focus on just the democracy variable plus the two controls. All right. And then for our third variable, we just want to focus on terrain. Okay. And so we're going to have the rugged terrain plus uh, GDP per capita on population. All right. And then our full model to end with. Okay. So then what we need to do is to rename these. First one's going to be ethnicity. Second one is going to be democracy. Third one is going to be terrain. Okay. Alrighty. I think that looks good. 
And then we're just going to end up storing that in each of these regressions in a different object. Let's go ahead and run that, make sure it works, and store the regressions. Okay, so that's the first step. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, we want to call model summary, but in order to, to call model summary, the model summary function, and display these regressions, they have to be in a list format. Um, so I'm going to create uh, another code chunk, and we're going to call this one uh, model setup. Uh, because we're going to do a number of setup steps in this code chunk and we're actually going to uh, work back and forth between this code chunk and another code chunk where we're actually calling model summary. Okay, so let's call this one call model summary. And that's where we're actually going to dis we're going to use this code chunk to actually display the regression table, and this code chunk to set things up. Okay, so let's set up our uh, models so that we can display them with the model summary package. All right, and here we want to write something like. Let's display our models with model summary, All right? Okay, so um, so like I was saying, we want to call model summary, but we need to have our models in a list uh, format first. So uh, we're going to create a list, and we're going to store it in this object called models. Um, so let's type list. And then uh, we're going to list our four models, but also while we're at it, we're going to change the names of the models so that they display nicely in our table. So the first model is ethnicity, so let's call that ethnicity. We're going to rename it ethnicity. Ethnicity equals ethnicity is the name of the object with that model, okay? And we're going to do this for each of our models. So second one is democracy. Uh, third one is terrain. So terrain equals terrain. And then the full model is just called full model. Okay, that's the object. All right, so let's go ahead and run that much. Okay, and that's created our list object, and you see, see it in your environment now. And now we're going to call model summary. So let's load model summary first of all, and we're going to call model summary on models, our list of models here. Okay, and see what that looks like. Okay, and there we go. We have our first table. Um, but notice that um, this regression table, I mean, it shows us the results, but it's not as informative as it could be. It's not as clear as it could be. It's not as accessible as it could be. Um, we really want to change a few things here, customize a few things to make this a really good looking regression table. So normally um, we would want, uh, for example, our uh, independent variables to have better names than just the abbreviations that uh, you know we imported from the pSciencer package, right? So, so we're going to change those names. We also want to change the order of our independent variables as they display in the table. So first of all, the intercept should be at the bottom of the table, you know, as a standard in social science uh, journals and working papers. And we also probably want to uh, list these in the order that we want to talk about them. So our ethnicity variables first, our democracy variable next, our terrain variable, and then after that, the control variables, which are um, not as much the focus of our analysis, okay? 
Um, and so that'll give us a nice you know, structure to the table where we see that stepwise regression and then the full model at the end. And then I think also um, we probably don't need all of these you know, model level statistics. Um, so we don't need, for example, you know, the log likelihood. We could probably just get away with the number of observations at the bottom. Okay, um, and that's informative. Uh, and these other, uh, you know, model statistics, um, you know, maybe we could put it in an appendix somewhere if readers are interested in that. Uh, and then finally, we want to give a title and a source note. All right, so those are the things that we're going to work on next. Um, the process of getting these variables in order and renaming them uh, is a little bit complicated, but not that complicated. What we want to do is we want to go back up to our setup chunk here and we want to do a coefficient map, right? Which is just going to be a vector with all of our, all the names of our, you know, variables and, you know, how we, you know, what they're called now and what we want them to be called. Okay, so here, actually what we wanna do is we wanna, uh, it's kind of the reverse of what we see up here where we put the name of the model as we want it to appear and then what it's called currently in our environment. Here we wanna, we wanna state what the variable is called now, all right, here in this list and of variables and then what we want it to be called okay for each variables so we're going to use a combined function so c parentheses and then we'll start with ethnic fractionalization so eth frac okay equals and let's call it ethnic frac because if we try to put fractionalization in here this may be not be enough space to fit ethnic fractionalization but ethnic frac should be enough information that our readers can identify what the variable is. So we have to find that balance between a descriptive variable name and one that is going to fit in our in our column. Okay, so ethfrac equals ethnic frac and then rel frac equals uh, religious frac. Okay, and then uh, V2X polyarchy will be familiar to us because we've been working with it for the entire term here, but our reader may not know what that is. So we could put polyarchy, or if you wanted to, you could call this democracy. Uh, rugged for rugged terrain, and we'll just call that one terrain. Um, and then we have uh, our GDP um, so this is going to be WBGDP. Let's make sure we get this right here. WBGDP per capita 2011 EST. Okay. Equals, and we'll call this one per capita GDP. And then um, our population variable is WBPOPEST equals and we'll call this population and then finally we want our intercept to appear so for the intercept we actually have to put it in parentheses because that's how it's appearing in our table uh, you can see up here intercept right can you see that whoa there it is so we have to put it in the parentheses and then we're just going to take it out of the parentheses when we display it so we're just going to call it intercept right okay so that's our coefficient map and then now we have to go back down to our model summary call. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, so models, and we're going to say coef map equals uh, coef map. Okay, and then now we have our coef map argument, and we're telling it that the coefficient map is called coef map. Right? We could call this anything. We could call it my map, your map, our map, or something. And uh, so then we would put coef map equals my map, or our map, or your map, or whatever. But we just simply called it coef map. Uh, let's see if that works. 
contains duplicated values position four. Uh, what does that mean? Oh, yes. Oh, looky here. I used a comma instead of a, an equal sign. Maybe you already caught that. Let's try it again. Okay, and now we have our, uh, independent, our independent variables in the right order with nicer names. Okay, so that looks a lot better. And then, like I said, that stepwise regression, you know, uh, structure where we're looking first at one set of variables, then uh, in this case, um, ethnicity, and then democracy, then terrain, and then the full model. Okay, always including these controls. Okay, so what else do we want to do here? So one thing we said we wanted to do was just include the number of observations. So let's go ahead and do that one next. So if we wanna just include the number of observations, then we have to adjust the goodness of fit map. So GOF map equals, and then we have to put what we actually want in the goodness of fit map as opposed to what's there by default. So we just want the number of observations. So N obs. Okay, and let's go ahead and run that, make sure it works. Okay, that uh, looks good. And then another thing that's missing here is usually we want some sort of stars uh, for our regression table to tell us, okay, like what's significant and what's not. Um, you know, we can kind of tell usually by looking at the coefficient and, you know, um, the standard error, but, um, but maybe or t-statistic or whatever's there, but uh, it's easier for our reader if we actually flag it for them what's significant and what's not. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, add stars. And this is really easy. We just say stars equal true, and this will give us stars for for the uh, significant coefficients. And I'll also add a um, a note at the bottom usually, yes, uh, that tells us what the stars mean. Uh, so, so a plus sign is just significant at the 0.1 level, uh, one star at the 0.05 level, two stars 0.01, and three stars 0.001. Okay, so we can see what's significant and what's not in the table. Okay, and then the remaining items here, I think, are just to add a title and some notes. And in order to do that, we have to have objects with our title and our notes that we want to add. So for title, we'll store that as caption and we'll say table one predictors oops, of conflict onset. Let me learn how to type here and uh, then reference for our, we're going to store our source note as reference, and we're going to take a shortcut here. We're not actually going to do a source note or a long source note. We're just going to say C appendix for data sources. Okay. And caption and reference. And now once we run that, we can take those. Those will be stored as objects. And then what we can do is we can take those and we can add them to our model summary call. So title equals caption, notes equals reference. All right. And that should add the title and the source note to our, to our table. Okay, ethnicity, democracy, terrain, full model. We have now a caption up here, a title up here. And uh, then we have our stars, our legend for the stars, and then we have a note, see appendix for data sources. Okay, so that is how you create a regression table with multiple models, um, one model per column using the model summary package, okay? Um, and in the next lesson, what we're gonna talk about is what happens when you have just one model? What should you do? Uh, usually, in those situations, a coefficient plot is going to be more compelling uh, and convey more information than showing the one regression analysis in tabular form. Um, so that's what we're going to do in the next lesson. I'll see you there.